All-State good hands play the night, and it comes from that Texas Southern A&M game. How about Richard Samuel? Look at this. Talk about a great catch. Laying out. My entire life, I have been a football player. My entire personality has been a football player. Everything that I've done in life, I realized was ruled by who I was as a ball player. And I played for a long time. Played for almost 22 years before my body started to hurt and I needed to retire. I got fortunate enough to start painting seriously a couple of years before um, I retired playing football and it reopened up the art world to me and it was absolutely beautiful and I loved it. And so after I retired, I started getting coaching jobs left and right. And I took them against my better judgment at the time because I was having a lot of fun doing my art. And going through that coaching carousel, that process, the off season, it's demanding, it's 24 seven. And I was not happy at all. Um, I took an offensive coordinator job to, to go back overseas uh, to coach, so I was doing a lot of Zoom meetings and interviews with players and all that kind of stuff. And the time that I was devoting to my art was suffering, and my art was suffering from it, and it caused a landslide, and my health was starting to suffer for it. I, was, I had a lot of anxiety. Um, I wasn't happy. I wasn't making as much art as possible. And I started to question if I've made the right choice. Uh, and being a football player your entire life, it's like going through uh, a change in life that you, you kind of can't believe. Cause you're like, this should be an easy choice. Like you're a football player, this is what you do. Um, but it was one of those things where it was like, I started to realize like maybe I don't love football as much as I thought I did. Um, and maybe it hasn't been the love of my life the whole time. Maybe art has been the love of my life this entire time and football was my hobby. And coming to that realization um, was absolutely amazing. I can't remember a time where I wasn't an artist or trying to do art. It's kind of always been there. When I was younger, my aunts and my mom, my grandparents, all of them uh, would tell me how good of an artist I was. But I didn't really get any of that from the outside world. And I made a, a peace poster, entered a peace poster contest in junior high. And it ended up getting third in the state of Texas and almost going to New York uh, City to represent the state. Uh, and that's when it kind of hit me like, hey, maybe I might be, I might be okay at this. Every kid needs to know it's okay to be creative and be different. You don't have to be a rapper or be good at sports. There's so many ways to express yourself. And I think that's our job as a community to have those conversations and our Parents need to tell the kids that being a black artist uh, is extremely difficult because in my opinion, you're not successful in the art world without collaborations and people that you work with. And if there's not a lot of people doing what you do, then it's very hard to get your work out there. The way we change that is more people own black art galleries. Uh, we throw more events. Uh, we put our art to the forefront, which makes everybody else view it as a commodity. And then it's a lot easier for a black artist to be successful with just doing visual art. I find inspiration in a lot of places in life. 
And I think that's what kind of makes my work special is there's a little bit of everything in it. There's, uh, I feel like there is some of my art that can resonate with anyone that looks at it. And I think that comes along with how I've been raised. I've been in a lot of different environments, exposed to a lot of different things, and it's given me a lot of inspiration in a lot of different ways. And I feel like I have art for everyone. I went to a lot of museums when I was younger. Uh, I got to introduce to a lot of creative people. And I always thought that was really cool that they had a space to fully express themselves. So it was a no brainer when uh, my art was starting to do really well and I needed a bigger space. I was like, I finally can open up a space where I can display my art, do my art, display other art for the community, really put my impact on a community. Having a gallery in general here provides me with the opportunity to give all kinds of people in the community a way to get their voice out, whether it's poetry, comedy, any type of, uh, any type of art. And being that it's also attached to the only black owned gallery in Austin is, is absolutely giant. Uh, so that's a huge responsibility to me is, is helping people get valuable experience in a creative industry and how to be successful. So the name Rich's Art in general is a, is a play on words. Obviously it's my name, uh, but it's R-I-C-H-E-S as like uh, riches, you know, natural resources or whatever. Um, and then I combined it with uh, art. So it's like art of rich quality. And if someone that wouldn't met me, if they just saw Rich's art, they would think, you know, rich art, which is great. That's what I want them to see it as. And once they meet me, they realize it has a double entendre and it's also my name as well. I want people to, when they say Rich's art, I want them to feel um, like a safe haven, a place that has helped a ton of people and provided motivation endlessly for the world. I feel like the world is so much, is such, and this is, this is redundant. Everybody knows the world's a beautiful place with art, but to just be able to nonstop create, um, I'm so passionate about. And the tagline that I've created is, uh, till death give us art. And it's like a little play on Shakespeare. And I believe it with every inch of my body. And until and when I leave this place, I'm gonna be creating <laughs> until that last breath, man. So All right. Yeah. Great research.